I ran out of time yesterday and today it's raining. But that's not too bad because most of the things I need to do are inside the shed and that's wiring my solar panels and of course looking at this my battery's low 12.2 volts um, because I've got all the lights on the shed because it's quite a dark and dull day today so I better crack on. As I said in my previous video my uh, intention is to get all of the solar panel wires into the shed here um, so that I can decide whether I want them in series or parallel. I could parallel all 350 watts up um, in the depths of the winter when I'm getting very little into my main battery bank or I can then use the different solar panels for different things, different experiments here in the shed. So the plan is to um, drill a big hole around some of these holes and place this uh, waterproof case over the outside. I'll uh, drill some holes to mount it and it should cover these holes. I'll put a bit of sealant behind it as well. And then we've got plenty of these uh, rubber grommet areas to uh, actually get some cables in. So I'm going to go ahead and drill a couple of holes. Definitely no going back now. Right, so when I drilled these holes, I didn't account for the overhang of the shed roof uh, above. So actually, the boxes are going to end up being quite a bit lower. But as long as I can uh, cover this hole, and like I said, the overhang should be fine anyway uh, on the outside. So we're going to have a slight elliptical opening rather than perfectly circular, like I was hoping for. There we go, now that's tightening up, and I'll just round off that edge to make sure it stays nice and watertight. So the rain's really coming down now outside, but that's I'm finished outside, so that's not a major problem. Um, now, the plan is to, all these wires, there's ten of them, five panels, positive and negative for each of them, are going to cut within a few inches of the wall here and I'm going to put some blocks up here um, different types of blocks that one there and uh, some commoning blocks as well and the idea is I'll have a 12 volt and a 24 volt system I can plug various charge controllers into if I need to and uh, on the inside of the shed I'm going to use this PVC 4 mil copper wire uh, in red and black to make it really obvious what is what um, and that's the same thickness and probably slightly better quality than this PV cable uh, which again all of this PV is 4mm um, but PV cables not very easy to get into places and this should be a bit easier so that's the idea interior cable exterior cable now the two new 100 watt panels are here we've got the negative of one panel uh, and a positive of that same panel, but that's connected through to the negative of the second panel. So these are in series, so they should be producing 40 volts or what have you, open circuit, and they come out here, and for the first time, let's plug it into my MPPT solar charge controller, and yes, it's showing PV is coming in, and... 23 volts it's got on those panels, oh that's dropping rapidly, uh, 600 milliamps, uh, that's not a lot of power is it, but uh, it is tipping it down really heavily now. So I've now wired up my second uh, 24 volt PV system here, the most negative point, the junction between the two panels and the most positive point, so these panels are in series. That's a 50 watt monocrystalline, another 50 watt monocrystalline, those black panels, and they're charging my lithium ion system. So uh, hopefully that will continue to charge quite nicely. And finally here, all the way on the left hand side, is the only 12 volt PV system I've got at the moment. It's that single 50 watt white monocrystalline panel, and those wires there go down to my battery boost charging system. 
where I've got a new solar charge controller. And now back on the bench, those wires from my 50 watt monocrystal in the white uh, solar charge controller were destined to go into this solar charge controller which connects to my booster pack uh, but not anymore because I have a new uh, solar charge controller which I intend to have a play with and uh, I got this a few weeks ago and I have opened it and uh, some of you may be able to date exactly when I got this uh, from the box inside because the amazing revolution is not what is inside however it is a solar charge controller nicely wrapped up in some bubble wrap and eventually there we are and it's a PWM5 solar charge controller made by Julian Eilert and he kindly contacted me and asked me if I'd like to have a play with one and of course I said absolutely so I want to get some connectors on here straight away and get this up and running um, now the reason why this is going to be better than the uh, cheapest PWM solar charge controller that I could find on eBay although I have to say I think it's a, a really good item is that uh, that one's only good for 3 amps and uh, my 50 watt solar panel could actually do 2.8 amps something like that um, and on a really good day <laughs> not like today uh, perhaps it might just creep to its maximum point and uh, I don't want to get anywhere near it if I can help it and the other reason is that Julian implemented this LED on the PWM5 and that will tell me the voltage of my booster pack. Um, it flashes, uh, say, three times to indicate 13 volts and then perhaps seven times to indicate 0.7 volts. So that's 13.7 uh, volts and that will be really handy in the solar shed because this doesn't show any details like that, it doesn't give me any idea on the battery state of charge. So there we have it, uh, red and black battery connections and yellow and black solar panel connections. So let's just make sure we've got everything round the right way, although I know um, actually Julian's put a protection diode in there, but uh, there we go, that blue LED shows three and then one so 3.1 volts apparently and let's put this solar panel in and now it's uh, oscillating which I think means we are up to float voltage so that's pretty good um, so there's obviously some power coming in despite the horrible rain outside well, I'm going to continue playing with the PWM5, and what will we call this? I'd like to call it the crystal version, because this one hasn't got the uh, final piece of heat shrink on and the, uh, the label, which is nice so that we can see inside. I'll link to Julian's series of videos on this uh, solar charge controller up in the top right-hand corner. And thanks again to Julian for sending this my way. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, and comment also if you can. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.